time to play. Got a little catch up here. Uh, this month or last week or so, particularly, I uh, won four rifles on the auctions and also picked up another one of those Winchester uh, 4x32 AO scopes. And uh, I guess we'll do that one first. What the hell? Oh. Okay. Now this. Let's see if we've got the Winchester logo right there. This is the Winchester 1977 XS. It's uh, the son of the Daisy 880 and grandson of the Sears Roebuck and Company Model 799, which came first. And uh, this was the scope that originally came on the rifle. It's not branded at all, but it's a 4x32. Looks like a, reminds me of a center line. Maybe they didn't brand it as Winchester, and it's just Daisy's take on the Winchester and center point and all that, you know, for themselves. Plain old 4x32. Now, this is the Winchester 4x32. You can see on the eyepiece it says Winchester Air Rifles. And these mounts are shorter than it came with this one. This, the, the, these mounts in this scope were factory that came with the rifle. These are taller that came with the Winchester branded scope. So we, we, we didn't use those. These are actually a little bit shorter, so and this AO scope is bigger around right here, but it's that'll be five millimeters or so to account for the adjuster. So it uh, sits it sits a little uh, a little lower, it looks like due to the increased diameter, which is fine. We'll put the the line of sight closer to the center line of the bore, which is more ideal less hold over as it were compared to what this what the rifle looked like with the with the, the scope it came with. I'm gonna show you here. That looks a little better, huh? And this has been rubbed down with oil once, the, the metal parts and the receiver. I like to keep the receiver rubbed down. I might send this send the forestock and the buttstock out to uh, Mid-Ohio Hydrographics. I think it was over Medina. It's not far from here, in a couple hours maybe, tops. That I had that I had do the uh, the Remington 725 over here. That's the edge cam. I might have, have that on this one. Just mask it off. On, on the hand grips there, and take the butt plate off, and, just, and mask this little plate right little, on the end of the grip there. Gives a nice contrast. Even with the scope, it, 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 you, you, this thing don't weigh more than about four pounds at that. <laughs> Need a high cheap pad. If you use those sort of things, I don't. So this is a new one. This this one replaces the 77 XS that came earlier. Back over here. I've got four Winchester air rifles now, and that was one of them. Anyway, to continue. Now, 
this is the grandfather of the Winchester 1977 XS, the Sears Roebuck and Company Model 799 that begat them all. These were sold for the first two years by Sears under contract from Daisy and then Daisy started selling them as the uh, 880 and the gold receiver then became black but it was metal as was this is stamped steel and this is a, more like a die casting and this one weighs a, a little bit more I think you can hold it real steady though I love this thing and it's narrower through here it's some of the modern the more modern air rifles like the the guide hawk, uh, the hot sons, and all that, they're a little wider, clunkier. You need to, to cut that down. And don't make it so square right here. You know, some air rifles, it looks like the, the Power Line 1000, where the stock's that deep at the front of the four stock. You know, you don't need that. You don't need the extra wood up there. Cut it down. Cut the shit off and save a couple, save a pound or a pound and a half. Hold that really steady, and it's interesting too. Just like the older one I got over there, it's a little older than this one by about five years, it looks like. That's a metallic black paint on that barrel. I don't know if you can see that. And the gold on this receiver is a lot better. Another way to tell these older daisies, you don't have the diamond in the four stock right there. That's the older one. That's how you. That's what you can. Way you can tell right off the bat. And it's a it's a righty righty rifle because the cheek piece sticks out on that side rather than both sides or this side. And the white and black caps and everything are real nice. It's a little yellow on this one, but whiter. It's whiter than it was, but I still got to get it with a Q-tip and some sort of cleaner to get the yellow off that white plastic. Can't remove it to sand it. So that's the uh, 78 version of the, the Sears Roebuck and Company model 799. Oh. Okay, now here's a nice one. This is Winchester number three. I got this one a bit before the uh, 1977 Exester. This is made by Daisy for Winchester. It's an 1894 uh, saddle gun. It took on leather actions, but it's a saddle gun. And that leather scabbard on one side of your hanger from one side or other of your the horn on your saddle round barrel and like the other daisies dirty weight oil right there it's got a slot open right here by the spring I don't know if you I don't know if you oil it here too or not but I gotta look at the instructions and these are those are wood stocks they've been oiled once I've got I've got to oil them several more times before it gets that nice satin handrail oil finish built up and uh, you see right here, this doesn't open to put the BBs in. And why they got this on their leftover from the Henry rifle, I don't know. This is one thing that Henry had that Oliver Winchester re-engineered his version to eliminate. You got to pull that back and there's a wider spot there to put the BBs in the whole 15 in front of this little lever and pull them back. Call it a carbine, but I don't, I don't, I think the carbine's barrel was only about that long. Um, and then, uh, oh, quit the guy to play Quigley down under. And John Wayne are big guys, like six and a half foot, with big hands. So they had they had this had the lever removed, had a blacksmith work it over and bow it out, so their hand could roll around it and they could whirl it to cock it. And right up to the last movie John Wayne did, The Shootist, 
he used that was his own gun he used that had that wide loop on it. I don't know, it wasn't Quigley, it was uh, Chuck Connors. Lane and Connors, you know, the rifleman, did that because they were big guys with big hands. So, anywho. Close to half cock, and you got to pull it all the way back to full cock. There it's a fire. Let's see if you know. A little kick to it. It's better it doesn't fire pellet cartridges, though. That would be nice. And nice chamfer on the end of the barrel there, but they didn't. Did the, 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 I wonder if that's stainless steel or what. Because they didn't, uh, didn't blue that part. Or paint it black. It actually looks more like like glass black. But there it is. A real 1894 Winchester BB gun from uh, December 05. If I'm reading the serial number correctly for the build date and. Uh, It's new old stock, basically. It's a light rifle, too. That thing can't weigh more about four, four and a half pounds. It doesn't feel like it weighs any more than a 760 Power Master. Now, this is a Daisy Model 104. You see, it's, it's, you, you crank this thing around to pull the little stop out of the way of the hole where you put the BBs in. And you can see right here the rear sight tube is missing. That's where it mounts. Okay, that's the safety right there. It's on safe now. Push it forward and it's, uh, it's hot. And it's still got the stickers on the, on the buttstock. Now, the, the pictures the guys the seller showed made it look like more like it was that like like a metallic silver with a squirt of bronze in it like that like mine was and I get it and I received this gold painted one rather than the one that was gold anodized but it's in nice shape it fires just fine I could just find a rear sight tube in good shape to put on it got the daisy logo right here We got cock up so far on this camp. You gotta bring it back up on this thing. Or it'll just hang loose. Has been kicked with this big spring, big fat spring in here in the comic. As I was told, the barrel that they, was called the comic that comes down in here to does its business. It's about 30 inches long. Definitely a kid size size rifle. Front sight blade is bent like that too. And that's that's the ones that I got this month. I've been going around the man cave and then rubbing down all these rifles with oil and uh, uh, Mr. Snyder this is your stock this thing was beat up when I got it besides not being padded real well inside the box which I will remedy when I go to send it back but anyway I gotta wait till the middle of the end of April for the Russian Federation I love that it's not Russia anymore it's the Russian Federation <laughs> Sounds like Star Trek, doesn't it? To send me the, the seal kit. Yeah, just this. About a 32nd of an inch deep. I am going to have to take a, my vibrating finishing sander. Add some coarser sandpaper and sand that down. I might make it where it's got a real slight taper from about here to the end 
Thanks, Shim. I like that color, but it's going soft because even the uh, checkering here is all gouged on both sides. So I am going to have to use some citrus strip to take all take all the the stain off of this and get it down to bare wood and raise the grain with water and all this sort of thing. And I'll put maybe four or five coats of true oil on it since it's Turkish walnut. It'll look like my custom uh, striker. I put the striker action in a modified Model 95 stock with the natural color of the Turkish walnut showing through. And I'll, here, here's, here's a picture of it here just for reference. I'll show you both sides. Beautiful, huh? Turkish walnuts got it. That's the lighter part, too, of the wood, the outer part of the, of the trunk of the tree. The inner part looks like western red cedar with black walnut uh, grain figuring through it. It's really expensive and drop dead beautiful. So, anyway, we'll get this fixed up while we're waiting like the end of next month to get the seals and everything in. Breach seal and two different piston seals depending on whether you're replacing one with a spring or a gas ramp. They're different materials and whatever. And uh, I'll leave it the original color on the end rubbing. I don't bother taking all that out because you're not going to see that anyway. But uh, We'll refinish the outside so it'll be natural Turkish walnut. Like I like I showed you with my uh, I renamed it the Striker 1000 XS 1000 X for obvious reasons of the woodstock. But the S now stands for super grade. Like the top shelf Winchester Model 70 is a super grade one. I borrowed that name. And I'm putting the Magnum cartridge in, and I'll, I'll test it if, if I have to have one of my sons cock it for me. It's going to be so much pressure, I don't know if I'll be able to cock that thing. I'm cocking it for the 50 foot pounds. That's not the same as using a torque wrench, you know, you actually leverage applying rather than just pulling it a little bit until it clicks, like you would with a torque wrench. So, you know what? Oh, oh, see, I want to get out of that big frame. I want to show you all this one again. This is a Winchester 1250WS from Woodstock. Beautiful color. It looks almost exactly like. The uh, Minwax number 231 gun stock that I used on a 160 Pell gun up there. Nice checkering, which looks like it's a little bit bigger, more like 14 lines per inch, maybe. Real nice. Old center, uh, vintage center point scope here. This thing's got some heft to it. has got about 10 pounds. That's, that's a nice one. And it's got an adjustable trigger on it. Got a fourth diagram. Nice rifle. I mean, this, this is a small game gunner, easy. Nice long, long barrel, too. So we'll, once I get my right hip fixed and I can get out again, we will, uh, go hunting with these different rifles so we can get some comparisons as to what they're going to do but this is a nice one it's 
based on the Daisy Powerline 1000 that beefed up a little and got checkered out. I love the checkered out. Checkered is always a nice touch. And this sort of ruddy amber color, like the Minwax number 231 gun stock, is just a nice color for a rifle. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. Shows the grain and check ring real nice without being real dark. I can't get the other Winchester out. That dang shoulder straps wrapped around the other ones. And I don't feel like making a mess trying to get it apart. So. Oh, you know what? I'll, I'll show you a picture of the, the, the slightly darker uh, real tree edge camel gun rack I got for Christmas here and finally got it together. I got all three 25 cows at the top of that one. And the two German rifles on the bottom, the RWS 300M, like 177 Magnum with a Cox Easy, and then the Diana 24D on the bottom, also a 177, but not quite as powerful. They both still shoot real good, though, so just they're accurate, they're easy to cock, and they got some power. That, that's what's, and they feel great in your hand, especially the Diana, the four stock is narrower kind of like the model 799 Sears rifle. The, the, the four stock on that the Diana reminds me, it's a 24D, I'm sorry, not 25, it's 24D. It feels like it's got that narrow, nicely shaped feel, just like the old uh, single single shot bolt action 22s we used to hunt with when we were young. I thought that was really hip. Just feels really good. I'll show you a picture of that here. And I got one more uh, rack left of the three, the three light ones I got that, that, that are holding all the 760s over there now. I got to hang up next to this one behind me here. And I will have used up pretty much all the space I got for gun racks, but I can still reach them. But be that as it may, we'll, we'll get to it. Oh, I got a. Uh, a man cave remodel video coming. It's taken quite a while to get it done. We'll also be stuck in the hospital and physical rehab for five weeks. And then recovering at home and everything. I still got home nurses association coming over. So we'll get everything done in due course. So good luck rolling. The creeks don't rise again. We'll see you next time.